Welcome to Emergency Chaos, where we provide tips and tricks to make you a better ER nurse. Today, we are going over documentation, including why it's important, the essentials, what to focus on, and overall tips. So thank you for joining. In the fast-paced environment of the emergency department, nurses often juggle numerous responsibilities, from coordinating with the different healthcare teams to administering critical interventions like antibiotics and vasopressors in septic patients. Despite appropriately placing priority and urgency on direct patient care, documentation should remain an essential for ensuring patient safety and legal protection. Documentation should not be dismissed as a simple routine task as it is how you show that you are a competent nurse that kept your obligation to your patient. Your documentation should clearly show that you kept your obligation to the patient. This is simply the commitment you have to keep your patient safe. You perform the ordered interventions necessary to treat them in a timely manner. You monitored them and assessed them regularly, and you promptly communicated when changes occurred. You advocated for and educated your patients. You escalated situations when needed, again, because you kept their best interest in mind. You provided professional nursing care. The essentials of documentation can be boiled down to being objective, meticulous, and prompt. Objective documentation is based on facts, not opinions, is based on providing details of what you see, you hear, you pop it, and the actions taken by you and or the team with the corresponding time of events. Now, meticulous documentation is based on providing accurate and complete de details. It should be brief yet comprehensive. It needs to be clear and to the point and easily understood. It needs to have every piece of information needed to paint the picture or tell the story of what happened. Ideally, you should be able to review your charting years down the line and know exactly what happened. Now, prompt documentation refers to our attempt to chart in real time as events occur. Now, this is where we as ER nurses struggle in the name of keeping our commitments to our patients, right? Because we rightly place more importance on performing the life-saving interventions than sitting down to chart. However, we must keep in mind that our documentation is important because we must document our life-saving interventions and actions in a timely manner so that, that it does not delay care and planning for this patient, at least be on top of putting in the vital signs regularly, right? Now, let's go over general tips that you need to know. You need to take the extra second to verify that you are charting in the correct chart. Charting vitals correctly in a timely manner is crucial. Therefore, ensuring the measurements you take are accurate is of utmost importance. Incorrect vitals, again, can lead to poor outcomes. Avoid overlooking triage details such as allergies, home medications, and pertinent medical history. For example, if another staff member down the line administered a medication to the patient who, will, who the patient was allergic to that med, and the allergy was not listed during the triage process that you did, you may be liable despite it being the other nurse's fault for not checking allergies. So again, avoid overlooking details like placing allergies, home medications, and, per and pertinent medical history in the chart. Now, narrative notes should be used whenever you believe more information is needed to explain a situation or to paint the picture better. Avoid long gaps of no documentation and avoid not addressing the issue of why your patient is in the ER. You can document hourly rounds. These can entail like inquiring about pain, urination, defecation, their comfort, how you kept them safe, how you kept them comfortable, that you kept their best interest in mind. And again, also addressing the issue of why they came into the ER. For example, if they're there for chest pain, every time you make no, note, every hour or so, every two hours or so, you need to address that chest pain. Are they having the pain still? Is it better? Is it worse? And what you did about it. Now, you need to reassess. If you administer pain medications, you will need a follow-up note on whether the patient's pain improved or not. If blood products were given, did the patient's condition improve? If you place pressure and bandage on a bleeding wound, did the bleeding stop? If you, if you communicate with anyone regarding patient care, note who you spoke to, why, and the outcome of the conversation. Did you verify a dose with pharmacy? You spoke to the lab regarding delaying results. CT scanner just wasn't available. Notify your provider of the worsening patient status. Who, why, and the outcome, like who you spoke to, why, 
and what happened. Now, if you use an interpreter, what was their name and their ID? And also, avoid using abbreviations. I know they can be helpful, but when you're new, I just prefer you avoid abbreviations so you don't get yourself into trouble for using the wrong one. And don't chart an issue or a patient complaint with without what was done by you. Ensure you include what was done by you and what the outcome. And simply avoid pasting, uh, avoid copying and pasting. Your documentation will start as soon as you assume care of the patient. It will start off with your initial assessment, showing that you evaluated your patient when you first assume care and you ensure that they were stable and nothing needed to be immediately addressed, such as a low blood pressure and so forth. Now, if something did need to be addressed, your documentation would show how you addressed it, who you talked to, what was done, and what the outcome was. With communications, you'll chart when you speak to somebody, such as providers, pharmacy, radiology, and so forth, demonstrating that you kept the patient's best interest in mind by coordinating and relaying information to the rest of the team. Interventions will be documented to show that you carried out the treatment plan as ordered in a timely manner, and if there was a delay, your documentation would back you up as to why. You'll reevaluate after interventions to ensure they are working. And if not, communicating to the team, you're going to regularly assess them to make sure that you're not getting worse without anybody noticing. And with your hourly rounds, you address safety issues, urination, bowel function, comfort, education, and so forth. Again, you're keeping your patients safe and their best interests in mind. Now, let's look at an example. On 10, 12, 2021 at 9.22, heart rate suddenly increased to 130s on the cardiac monitor upon entering the patient's room, exhibited jerking like seizure movements with cyanotic lips, placed on non rubider mask at 15 liters in a left lateral position, padding was placed on side rails, remained on continuous monitoring. At 9.23, Dr. Smith was notified per the provider, 2 milligrams of lorazepam and 1 gram of Keppra was administered IV. See the MAR for further details. Seizure activity lasted for 2 minutes. At 9.27, patient was turned, clean for incontinence, GCS of 8, following seizure activity, pupils equal and reactive to light, moving all extremities, no cyanosis noted, vital signs stable with 95% on room air, Heart rate 91, blood pressure 132 over 85. At 930, the patient is regaining consciousness, is a GCS of 14, confused and oriented times 1 to name. Patient reoriented to the situation and provided reinsurance. At 955, patient is oriented times 4, GCS 15, pupils equal and reactive to light. Motor strength symmetrical bilaterally, sensation intact, follows commands, resting comfortably, provided education on seizure-like activity, medications administered, and safety measures in place. So this documentation shows that you notice an issue, you did something about it, you communicated to the provider, you performed the interventions in a timely manner, you kept your patients safe, you monitored them, and you reassessed them, and you provided an outcome at the end, again, with how you kept the patient safe. So final word. Your documentation should clearly show that you kept your obligation to the patient. This is simply the commitment you have to keep your patient safe. You perform the ordered interventions necessary to treat them in a timely manner. You monitored and you assessed them regularly and you promptly communicated when changes occurred. You advocated for and educated your patients. You escalated situations when needed because again, you kept their best interest in mind. You provided professional nursing care. Now, let's go into the question of the day. What type of myocardial infarction should not get nitroglycerin? Again, what type of myocardial infarction should not get nitroglycerin? The answer will be at the bottom of the description text. And if you would like to continue learning, consider checking out our books on Amazon. The link will be at the bottom of the description text and in a pinned comment in the comment section. And if you've learned something recently while at work, that may be helpful to other new ER nurses, please consider sharing it in the comments so that we can all benefit and help each other out. Thank you. And as always, teamwork makes the dream work. And here at Emergency Chaos, we are proactive, not reactive.